Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel today. Our worship is going to be led by Sarah McCampfell, who is our pioneer leader at Nottingham Snenton. We're grateful to Sarah for her time and thought that she has put into the preparation for this meeting. And I'm sure that we will find it really interesting and we will feel ministered to through the thought that she will bring to us. Sarah will bring to mind how God is our refuge in all circumstances. And of course, the difficult situation in Afghanistan causes us to pray that God will be a strong refuge for those who live in fear with nowhere to go. And so I'd just like to start this morning's service um, by uh, a small prayer, um, which we can all pray for this situation asking God to be a refuge and strength. For those who are fleeing, God brings sanctuary. For those who are staying, God brings safety. And for those who are fighting, God brings peace. For those whose hearts are breaking, God brings comfort. And for those who see no hope, God bring hope. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we get to share together. This time when we, um, as we just sit at home or sit wherever it is that we are, we just get to soak into you. And we get to learn and, and figure out more of what our relationship with you looks like. And God, as we share together this morning, would you enable our hearts to be open to what you have to say? As we open your word, God, may we see things that maybe we've not seen before. And God, as we use our ears to listen, would we hear your voice this morning? Lord, would you be with us, be with us, and would you bless our morning? Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our Bible verse this morning is taken from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation?
Psalm 91. I've been thinking a lot recently about God as our refuge. Now it's kind of appropriate within the last kind of week's events of world events um, and the way the world currently is that we kind of, I've been thinking about this. And I, my thoughts automatically go to Afghanistan as I think of a refuge for people. Burkina Faso as there's kind of stuff sadly going on there. Haiti where people might seek refuge from storms that threaten once again. Venezuela where the Covid crisis is just not under control. And we think about our situations as well. Maybe the situations that we need refuge from. Things like grief, depression, anger, loneliness, debt, our general health, our mental health. We all have struggles on a daily basis. And maybe sometimes we feel like we can't face it alone. And the truth is we don't have to. We have an amazing and gracious God who wants to offer us his wings. His wings to find refuge under. Now the truth is, this is me being honest, I don't actually share this thought with you this morning because I was asked to do the online service. I share this thought with you this morning because I need to hear it myself. I'm someone who generally just cracks on with things. I get on with it, regardless generally of the situation. I tend to just crack on. But sometimes I can't. And the truth is I don't have to. I don't have to try to do things in my own strength. I think we all get to a point where we need a space. A safe space. I don't know where your safe space is, but my safe space is a car journey. If I ever feel like I need to escape or just get away, I tend to jump in my car and I tend to go via a drive through not a McDonald's drive through generally a coffee type drive through so Starbucks or Costa, and I'll generally head in the direction of water. Now, one of my places at the minute um, is is Homepay Point. I will often just go there and then park up and go sit by the water. Um, and I don't know what it is about that, that place or that physical thing of being near water, but for me, that is a, a safe space. In the beginning of Psalm 91, we're given a place, and it's kind of imagery-based, um, at this and we're given a place under the shadow of the almighty now i don't know about you i don't tend to go chasing shadows or hiding under shadows there's only one reason why i would find a shadow to hide under and that is because or oh, that is when it's very warm outside and i need to hide from the sun because i am very pale but isn't it amazing that god has set aside this space for us. Especially in those times when we really need it. God also wants us to know that this is a space of safety. Where no harm will come to us. It is a sacred space between you and God. In the psalm between nine verses 9 and 13 it says this. If you say the Lord is my refuge... And you make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disasters will come to your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you. To guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands. So that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and serpent. We simply have to acknowledge that God is our refuge. And then we accept the place that he offers us, that safe space that he offers us. I think about the days when I can't always accept his refuge. 
Maybe because I feel like I can do it alone. Maybe I feel like my strength is greater than his. And naive Sarah sometimes does think that. He doesn't take the space away when I think like that. The space is still there. Even when I think, or you think, you don't need that space. It's there for you, whenever we need it. I was reading the commentary, uh, which is this rather big book in the background um, by Matthew Henry on this passage as I was kind of thinking about refuge and, and what I was going to share. And it talked about a safe space being a bit like home, as in making our home in God. Now home is a place to be accepted, to be loved, to feel secure. A place maybe, maybe where we relax and unwind. What does it look like for you to make your home in God? We were talking a few weeks ago about home at one of our fire pits and we shared how Jesus didn't have a home. He didn't have a physical home, but he created an environment for, him, for himself where he was loved by the people around him and he chose people. He was accepted by those people. We know he wasn't accepted by everybody, but he was accepted by, by some people. And he was secure with those people as well. And that is where he found home. Jesus was a nomad, but he found home. For me, Oprah Winfrey, a legend in my eyes, um, sums it up perfectly. And she says this about home in particular. When you invite someone home, you invite them to yourself. I'll just say that again. When you invite someone home, you invite them to yourself. Now, if I think about God saying this, or we, we put God in there instead of the you, when God invites you home, he invites you to himself. When God invites you home, he invites you to himself. I love that. I love that God... God invites us and he wants us to be part of, of that with him. He wants to protect us. What a gift. How kind is, is God. A God who loves us so much. When we accept that love from God and we in turn love him back, this is part of what the psalm says in verse 14 as well. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I just love that. He acknowledges us. He will be there for us. When we're in trouble, he will be with us. Whatever our situation, he is there. There is a place in his home, under his wings, for us. And we know that Psalm 46 is, is a similar verse talking about resting in the shadow of the Almighty. His love is just amazing. I don't know whether you've ever seen or heard of this book. Um, it's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie McKessie. It's a beautiful book and I've come across this um, page within this book. I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this quite clearly. Um, if I do this. And I'll read it. And it says, Sometimes I feel lost. The boy says this. Me too, said the mole. But we love you, and love brings you home. I just love that. I love that the simplicity of love bringing us home is just so clear. 
regardless of who we are, what we've done, what we've got going on, the space that we're in, in our head or physically, there's always a space for us with God. Love brings us to the place of safety, the place of acceptance and the place of refuge. I hope that this week you can find that place of refuge. Whatever it is that you've got going on this week, may you find a sacred home where you and God can be, where you can find protection in the shadow of the Almighty. As our morning together is concluding, I want to share a final um, piece of music with you. It's called I Am Not Alone. As you listen to this music, maybe reflect on what God has been saying to you. And maybe you could pop it in the comments down below. Or maybe even on the William Booth Memorial Hall's Facebook page. Use this song to reflect and to end our time this morning.
as our blessing this morning, um, I'd like us to share um, part of a, a morning prayer by the Celtic Daily Prayer Book um, together. The words will come up on the side of the screen here and I would hope that you um, would maybe say these as you kind of sit wherever you're sat right now. So the words are on the screen if you'd like to follow along. Christ is a light, illumine and guide me. Christ is a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and on my right. This day be within me and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ is a light, Christ is a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and on my right. Amen. As you go and do whatever it is that you do today, um, I want you to just remember that God is our refuge and God knows where we're at today, whatever the situation and circumstance. He knows and he is your refuge and he is all that you need. Have a lovely day.
want to thank Sarah uh, McCampbell for her ministry uh, on this occasion. It's been great to get to know uh, Sarah much better in recent months and uh, to see her thrive in leadership uh, up at Snenton. It's great for our core to have as part of its mission uh, involvement and support, encouragement and resourcing uh, in that centre. Uh, we share the founder's name and we share the same purpose and desire to be there for others. So many thanks to uh, Sarah and to Harry for his preparation also and those who support this ministry. Our majors Robert and Julia are on furlough uh, this coming week and uh, they will uh, return uh, towards the end of uh, August. We wish them well as they uh, rest and recuperate and no doubt prepare their hearts and minds uh, in the Lord for coming uh, challenges and uh, pressures and all that goes with leadership of a, a, a church and a fellowship uh, like ours. Our online ministry uh, next week, the 29th of August, is going to be led by uh, Chris and Delia, Cuda and Peda, and we look forward very much to their ministry amongst us in this way. Planning and preparation continues behind the scenes uh, for our return to worship at the Memorial Halls on Sunday the 5th of September. I think when I consider this, everyone will have their own thoughts. Uh, I can see that we will have a time of great mutual encouragement in the Lord we will have a time of thanks and reflection too and there'll be a time of rebuilding I think it's going to be a gradual process uh, we'll keep open minds and hearts I'm sure and we'll let the Holy Spirit do his work amongst us uh, in these days we consider those who need our prayers within and around the fellowship Don who remains in hospital at the present time, uh, Michael, as he prepares for further treatment, and Joe and Kirsty, as they continue their grieving and coming to terms with the loss of Carol. Please refer to the call to prayer, which is uh, so well prepared by uh, Major Julia uh, for other circumstances. And then of course, further afield in our society and further beyond, lots of uh, reasons to keep praying and keep aware of what's going on around us as well. So finally, our Burnstump 100 fundraiser takes place on Sunday uh, the 22nd and you'll, some of you hopefully be out with us at Burnstump if the weather holds fair. If you would like to support financially on that and don't know how to pick up the Just Giving a uh, page that's come out via Corps Secretary Sharon, the details, then just have a word with me do, and um, I'm sure we can uh, sort that out with you. Thank you very much indeed, and have a great week. Be blessed in all that you do, and uh, do stay with the Lord this coming week. Amen. <laughs>